Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today from the brand new Channel 9 Studios, this is yeah. my first show here, it's my guest, David Katui. Hello. I pronounced it correctly? Absolutely correct. Excellent. <laughs> That's the French way, I love it. Uh, I like to pronounce people's names correctly when they, if, if you're going to come on the show, I should get your name right. Yeah, <laughs> That's thanks, kind of my I rule appreciate it. <laughs> and we, uh, David's joining us today to talk about the UWP Community Toolkit, correct. which is a set of uh, some controls, some helper functions uh, that is just released on as a NuGet package correct. recently. Yes. And so you're going to show us what's in it, mm -hmm. why was it created, what does yep. it help me do, Okay. fun stuff like that. So perfect. So UWP Community Toolkit, the important point here is community. Okay. Um, the idea since the very beginning was to involve the community with us uh, to help us figure out how to simplify um, UWP development. So today mm -hmm. you can grab the, the SDK, get Visual Studio, and you can start working on your application. But sometimes you may have to deal with plumbing, or sometimes you may expect high-level controls that you don't find right. in, the, to, in the SDK, uh, for good reason, obviously. And uh, to fix that, the idea was, uh, should we create a toolkit just on our own and then give that to the community, or should we just be more open and just start with the community and at the very beginning, we handpick uh, several MVPs, the most involved, and I can think about Scott uh, Lovegrove or uh, Morten Nielsen from the community. They are really active guys mm -hmm. on the community. They are helping the community to build uh, UWP applications. So the plan was to start with them, think about what we could do for V1. So when you say we, we exactly who's we? It's Microsoft. In my team, we are um, four people. Uh, my team is inside Windows. The name of the team is uh, Partner Application Experience, okay. PAX. So PAX. it's Windows slash PAX. Yeah. You uh, and I used to be colleagues in DX. Uh, correct. The developer I used to evangelism work. Uh, group, and, and the folks on your team were doing such impressive work that Windows drafted you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and my and work, now you're over there. Yeah, my work here is a kind of an extension of what we did in the uh, evangelism world. The, the idea is clearly to help community mm -hmm. use our tools and create fantastic things, fantastic applications. We are not creating applications for them, but at least we provide um, required bricks that they can use to build their own applications. So it was the case uh, back in DX, and it's more Windows focused right now, obviously. Right. Mm -hmm. So here enter the UWP Community Toolkit. Um, I can probably show you, we have a sample application. Okay. The toolkit itself is based on a uh, GitHub repo. So if yep. you want to go to the GitHub repo, which is right here at okay. Microsoft slash UWP Toolkit, you will find all the code of the toolkit itself yep. and of the sample okay. application. Cool. The sample application, you can find it as well under UWP Community Toolkit Sample App on the store. So it, even without ah, okay. uh, dealing with Visual Studio, whatever, you can still uh, download it and use it. And we have four buckets, controls, notifications mm -hmm. helper, animations helpers, and services. So I won't go through all the control that we have here, but basically the idea was either to fix um, a missing uh, thing, think about the range selector. We have sliders right now in the SDK, but you have no way to easily create a control that can um, specify a range, like min and max value. Ah, so okay. that's why we provided this control, which is a double slider, actually. And we also have a kind of control that you can already do today with the SDK. For instance, hamburger menu can be easily done using a split view. But for the developer uh, we are thinking about, beginners or people that don't have too much time to create an application, thinking about hamburger menu is not just using the, the split view, it's also thinking about this button, which has mm -hmm. to be on top of everything, right. and you have to deal with it, and you have to find the right uh, font icon that you, to use to have these little three lines. It's something, yeah. it's doable, yeah. that's not the problem here. Right, so the hamburger control, there's no such thing as the hamburger control, you do a rectangle, you do a box at the top with three lines, yes. and then you do a menu, and it's all put in a split In view, the split view, And then Correct. you got to understand, you know, when is it on top? When you know, it's not, when... Like it, that. He, so it's, it's a lot of plumbing. 
The it's, code, it's not that hard to do. No, it's not hard. But it's plumbing. And right? here, what you have to do is just say, hey, I want hamburger menu. Mm -hmm. This is my foreground. This is the item template I want to use. This is the option item template because you have here the menu. And we also yeah. have a settings at the bottom that you can also use. And for the user, it's just defining values instead of defining how the control should work. Mm -hmm. That's the point here. And that's the point for most of our controls here. Um, they are all doable because we did it. <laughs> I mean, right. we are just using the SDK. And then presumably the code for that hamburger menu looks pretty similar to the stuff you'd have to do by hand if you were just doing the hamburger menus by hand. Yes. And there's probably, obviously, stuff in there that you can learn because it's written If by you are interested are by the plumbing and how it works under the hood, you can just go yeah. to the GitHub repo right. and see the code. But when we were discussing with developers, they think about developing for Windows as an easy task. They just download Visual Studio. No. You know, and they want to drag a, and drop. As somebody who's been a developer for a long time, I never use the word easy. Yeah, but it has to <laughs> be easy. Things are straightforward, things All are doable, three. nothing's easy. <laughs> but we try to make it easier, let's easier, say. Easier, yes. Yeah. So um, they are really happy to have a Nugget packages because mm -hmm. uh, if you are a developer and you are not interested by the code, you just right. need to grab it. Um, the toolkit from it also, Nugget. also gives you more consistency across applications. Correct. Because the default for that hamburger menu control is this. And if you just slap it in, this is what you're going to get. And you have just to tweak colors or right. just presentation. Mm -hmm. That's true. And developer think, OK, I want a range selector. I get this toolkit, and I have my range selector. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I, obviously, I can think about, OK, I need a double slider. With, you know what I mean? It's easier right now. Yep. We are not fixing all the problem of the universe, but at least we provide a, a, a first start. So we have controls. We have also, uh, we worked with the notification team. Um, they were mm -hmm. publishing the notification extension on a separate repo, on a separate GitHub. Uh, and we decided to merge everything because it's part of what we want to do, like uh, helping people achieve more by removing uh, plumbing code, let's say. Yeah. So yeah, if you want to deal with live tile or toast, um, you have to deal with XML and oh, XPath, yes. and that could There's be like 20 not, different templates. Yes. And it's Thanks to this notification extension, there is an object model on top of that. Oh, you cool. just deal with the object mm -hmm. model. So think about a toast. Here is a code of a toast. You create a toast content, which is an object and not XML path, and then you specify properties. Oh, look and how easy that is. It's really easy. And then with that, you can pop a toast easily. Nice. Same thing, obviously, for live tile, etc. Then we also have animations. We, ah. introdu we introduce <laughs> with Windows 10 something extremely powerful, the Composition API. Yes. Composition API is here to help you really achieve uh, fast and fluid animations. But there is a drawback. It's not that easy. You have to understand that you are not at the XAML layer, you are at the Composition layer. You have to deal with that. You have to deal with sometimes complex um, expressions if you want to do mm -hmm. animation or whatever. Here, the toolkit just provide you, let's think about offset, for instance. I can play with the offset of my object. See, that moves exactly what happened. We have two options. First, if you are more a, blend, a Blender-oriented guy and mm -hmm. you want to deal with drag and drop stuff, we provide it for you here, a behavior. This behavior just specify, this is the offset I want. This is my duration. Thank you very much. Apply that immediately. If you are more a code guy, then you can just use extension that we added to any UI element, offset, fade, whatever, mm -hmm. where you specify the values. It's a nothing function. You wait for it. The animation is done. Cool. And obviously, that works for all kind of services. Always the same thing. I can rotate it. So it's a little bit too much. <laughs> don't forget its degree. And same. You rotate. You get the values. You don't. And you can even. Um, use the free API. You can say toolkit logo dot rotate dot offset dot uh, blur dot start async and they will be merged and ah, start for you simultaneously. Uh -huh. And you can await for it if you want or if you don't want you can just run it and then uh, it's like fire and forget stuff. The, the goal here it's always the same thing. You can do the same thing for, by yourself. But yeah. here it's Y9 of code like my object dot rotate. Right. Easy to do. And that's our and motto. You can do it yourself, but it's an awful lot of code. It's an awful and lot of learning. And you have it's to maintain it, of, and you have to uh, yeah. fix bugs if there are. And it's an awful lot of learning how it all works in the first place. Yes. Here, you just get at, it. As a beginner, you want to start simple, but beautiful. Right. 
And then, oh, perhaps in the future you are interested by how animation and composition works, then open the, the, the box and see how yep. it works. Yep. And finally, we also provide services. And in services, I mean connection to uh, network services. One of them, the easiest one, is clearly um, Bing. You can say, hey, Bing, I want to request a sync a search. This search will be done here on the United States for this specific text. And you can get results from Bing. And then you, oh, cool. But you'd still, you'd still need to go get an account and have your app API for and Bing, all of no, that stuff? No, it's, uh, oh, there is a okay. completely free no account version here okay. using just REST API. For other services, I agree, like Twitter and Facebook, you have to create your account on Twitter and Facebook. Mm -hmm. This is where our documentation could be really, really interesting. If you go to services here and for instance you think about, okay, I want to publish something on Facebook, then here we get for you a complete, complete recipe. This is what you have to do if you want to get your uh, app ID and even the settings that you have to set with the values. Ah, so okay. it's a so this would allow no you to publish to Facebook from inside your app. Exactly. Okay. Um, services most of the time, uh, at least Facebook and Twitter, are read and write. Right. You can read from it. Like you can yep. get your wall. Let me show you for Facebook, for instance. Here is the code. First, you initialize with your app ID, mm -hmm. and this this is where you need documentation to go through the process to get your app ID. Once you have it, you can log in, log out, obviously, with one line of code. You can get your feed, for instance, okay. with one line of code, but you can also get your picture. More interest interestingly, you can post to your feed, to your feed, sorry, you can post to your feed with a dialogue to confirm, okay, this is what you will okay. see, mm -hmm. because being silent and publishing on the wall could be stressful for people because they don't see what will be published. So yeah. with the dialogue, at least you see, okay, this is what I'll have on my wall, I validate it or not. So you have both options. And you can also post picture. That's for Facebook. We have exactly the same for Twitter. For Twitter, same thing. You initialize it with the required value. Then mm -hmm. you can log in, log out. You can get user. And obviously, you can tweet just a text. Or you can tweet a text with a specific picture. Up to four pictures can be tweeted. Okay. So it's like one line of code. And you don't have to deal with OAuth security and all REST APIs that could be there. You don't have to deal with updates. of mm -hmm. your, or You know they are updating their API services every time. This is done for you by the toolkit. Fantastic. Yep. This is it. Great. So how many people contributed to it? Ha! So it was unexpected, I would say. We started, we launched it um, one week and a half ago. Okay. And we are already at seven, 637 commits. Wow, with 25 <laughs> different contributors. Fantastic. 25 different contributors. We have 47 issues open. Some are bugs because we also have bugs. Uh, but okay. most of the time it's feature requests. This is the idea. Add drop shadow in the animation library. All that kind of stuff. People mm -hmm. and the community is uh, responding tremendously. Uh, I was not expecting that much. Like I spent all my day just checking the PR and the pull request and checking if everything is fine and responding to people. They are happy that we, Microsoft, and the community works together to provide a yeah. uh, high layer uh, on top of the SDK. Mm -hmm. And we already have 40, f more than 400 stars. Moving forward, do you, do you see a continue that will develop some, community will develop some? I hope so. Will it ultimately just be all the community? Um, I would love to be able to remove the toolkit completely. Uh, because uh, obviously in the, um, the future, the SDK, we get more and more feature in it. But in the meantime, I would say that... Uh, I mean contributions uh, to the toolkit. I mean, uh, I'm expecting 80% community, 20% okay. Microsoft. We, are, we, Microsoft, are here to keep quality mm -hmm. and to work on things that are not easy to work on. Like, for instance, I'm planning to add more accessibility to the controls. So, and that's not something easy to do, and people are most of the time reluctant to do that. But mm -hmm. we, Microsoft, we need to ensure that everyone can uh, use these controls and be able to uh, create application with it. So that's part of the thing we will do. And then uh, it's, uh, I see uh, that as a um, project management uh, job for me. Right. Like people are coming, hey, we think about this. They discuss between them, and at the end, we need to take a decision. Then Microsoft can come and say, hey, this is our opinion. Community say, this is what we think. At the end, we find a common way, let I say, and then someone can develop that. It could be Microsoft, mm -hmm. and it could be community. 
Cool. So what, uh, if, you, if you know, what additions are currently being worked on? What, <laughs> what could we expect to see next? It's easy because we have uh, flagging uh, our issue. We, um, we actually know, the community uh, provided a blade control. I love this one. You see the um, Azure portal, the new one, when you click on a button, yes. a new blade is added, and then you click on this one, a new blade. So you have this kind of tree view. It's like a tree view, but with blades one after mm -hmm. the other. We have this control right now, ready for 1.1. One, one. So 1.1 one, one will be okay. end of September. Ah, cool. Uh, we also improve uh, various things like bugs. If I'm taking care, we will have drop shadows. A new option, so we have blur, rotate, scale, etc. in the mm -hmm. animation library. Drop shadow will be there. Um, what else? Uh, we have, like you see, <laughs> uh, we have a carousel with composition. Yeah. We have a wrap okay. control. We have a Bing services supporting for video, and you see, that's a lot. Fantastic. <laughs> yes, and that's just end of September. So for mm -hmm. V1.1, we plan, we hope to ship a version every month. Every month. Every month. Interesting. This one is going to be huge. Because community response was so uh, uh, wow that a lot of people came and said, hey, yeah, obviously I'm using this in my own toolkit. Mm -hmm. Why not sharing it with everyone? And then we need to polish it and integrate it into the toolkit. And that's one one. I hope that for 1.2, it's going to be uh, smaller because that's a lot of work to yeah. maintain that and be sure that everything is working fine with the right quality. Cool. Very cool stuff. Yeah. So if anybody's doing, for people who are doing UWP development, everybody doing that should absolutely take a look I at this. I think so. I think um, so. You know, I've, I've done hamburger controls before, and I got the code from Shen's blog, and, you know, it was understandable. It was, you know, easy enough to figure out, but, Just you know, one control to drag going, and drop? Well, going from never having done one before to finding his blog to reading his blog and playing around with it, you know, that's several hours worth of yep, getting started versus just being able to, you know, Have get this toolkit and say, bam, hamburger control, let's move on. So yep. that's really, really cool. That's the, and today, to be honest, I thought the controls should have been the most um, exciting part of the toolkit. And to me, that's my own opinion, it's yeah. not. I'm extremely excited by animations mm -hmm. because you can merge them yeah. and that's extremely easy to do wow things with it and services. Yeah. Like publishing to Twitter was al or Facebook was always a pain and yes. now... Well, the thing about animations, that would be th the difference between having it in your app and not because the amount of time it would take to learn how to do that yes. is probably daunting. So you'd say, oh, well, in the next version or yes. somewhere I'll, down the road, wait. I'll yes. add animations when I have time to learn how to do it. Now you don't have to learn anymore. You just yeah. get you just get it. I had an application and I wanted to add a blur uh, when I display a message box, and I was oh, um, and but now it's like background the blur mm -hmm. display my message box that band but go. remove the blur done three cool lines of stuff. code. Cool stuff. <laughs> awesome. All right. So uh, people building Windows 10 UWP apps get the toolkit, uh, download it, play around with it, we'll let you guys know. What you find? Come, uh, create issue if you have a question, if you have um, uh, something that you want to add to the toolkit, or if you want to contribute, just create an issue that's clearly open to everyone. We are accepting all PRs. Excellent. We'll have you back sometime in the fall to show us what's new. Excellent idea. Cool. Thank you. All right. We will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox. Bye-bye.